On day 28, Deborah the Explorer will drive over to Wall Drug Store and look there. Then she'll drive to the Minuteman Missile Site, drive back to Wounded Knee Museum, over to the Minuteman Missile Vista Center, and then into the Badlands. There she'll drive through that until she gets to the Sage Creek Road and drive along it to Scenic and then enter the Pine Ridge Reservation through another part of Badlands on down to the Pine Ridge where she'll go to Wounded Knee Massacre site and then drive back to Rapid City for the night. It is raining a little as we leave early in the morning, but it'll quit raining. It's just going to be overcast most of the day. We have been seeing signs for wild drugs since we left Sioux Falls and headed to Mitchell on our first day of driving. They're all over everywhere out here. So we're excited to see what wall drugs really is. The story goes that in 1931, Ted Husted bought a drugstore in a town of about 300 people in South Dakota called Wall. But they were about to go broke, so in 1936, his wife Dorothy noticed all the traffic out on the highway headed over to a new Mount Rushmore and said, why don't we put up signs saying, giving away ice water. He decided to give it a try and by the time he got back from putting up the signs, dozens of people had already stopped and thus a legend had been formed. And now we're in Wall itself. And soon we're on Main Street. There's not much there, but Wall Drugstore covers an entire block and all the rest of the stores seem to be doing well also. This about out of business drugstore now has two million visitors annually. Let's look around and see why. That giving away free ice water has really seemed to help them. And now they have a cowboy themed shopping mall with dozens of different stores, restaurants, and activities to do. We decided we're going to eat breakfast here. The dining room has a huge art collection of Western art, and we look around a little bit there, and then we eat, and then it's time to look around the rest of the mall. There's an animated cowboy band playing, but the music wasn't working at the time. And there's even a Traveler's Chapel here. They sell just about anything you'd like to buy here at Wall Drugs. And in fact, they still even have a drugstore here that is active and working you need to get a refill. Out in the backyard you can get your picture taken at Mount Rushmore or ride in a stagecoach. Get your picture taken on a fucking Bronco or many other activities that you can do out here. Why you can even ride a jackalope if you want to or stand beside a six foot tall rabbit. Out back is even more shopping in the backyard mall. Oh, something's happening. Back here you can touch a buffalo or see pictures of how it used to be here on the west. You can watch a card game. Get your picture taken with a girl. Or even get your bladder flatter in the restroom. And now it's time to leave Wall and head on. At least we thought it was. Just a little bit down the road, we get off the road and we head toward the Minuteman missile site 
called Delta-09. This is where one of the missile silos is that has scattered across the West. When they moved from liquid propelled rockets for defense to solid propelled that they could store in silos, they started building facilities. They built seven squadrons across western United States and each one had three flights. Each flight had ten missiles, each with a central control making over a thousand missiles. These missiles were placed in hardened silos to protect they were brought in by trucks like this, huge trucks to carry the missile, and then they were set up and dropped down the site. There was also one centrally located launch control. We're not going to be able to go there. So there are three sites scattered along the highway. Delta 09 is the missile site. Delta 01 is the launch site and the visitor center. We'll see the first and the last one. Now let's look at this missile site. This is what it has underground, but we're going to only be able to look at the top part. As you'll be able to see from here, it's a relatively small area, only less than a half acre, but here's a tremendous punch with a nuclear missile. You can see from Deborah and how big the site is. We have a soft support building, a security system, and a hardened ultra high frequency antenna to communicate with it. There's a personnel access to crawl down to work on the missile. And this is where the missile silo is. Currently, it's covered by a glass cover, but that would not have been there uh, during the Cold War. This back in the back is a blast door that would have been over it to keep it safe from attack. Looking down through the wet glass, we can see that there's a missile still there, but the nuclear material has been removed from it. And this is what it would have looked like if you'd opened the door at that time. And here's what it would have looked like if it had to be launched. As said, there were over a thousand of these scattered across the United States. Now there are about 400 active ones. The rest have been decommissioned like this one. In five minutes it could be away to its target. There was a Minuteman 1, 2, and 3 over the course of time and now it's time to leave this area. We got in too big of a rush leaving Wall. We needed to stop at another place at the Wounded Knee Museum. We'll see this and then later see the site it actually happened. The theme of this museum is how the white invaders from Europe treated the Native Americans who lived here before they came here and it's pretty well true everything here. There were 17 native culture areas when the white men arrived and horses really changed that. But there was greed and genocide and we took this land and cut it off to have less and less and less. The end was when Sitting Bull died in the ghost dance and the last battle fought was called the Battle of Wounded Knee or the Massacre of Wounded Knee. We'll see that in a little bit. Now we're going to the Minuteman Missile National Historic Visitor Center see it a little bit. This is a history of the Cold War and how we were scared of nuclear attacks of various kinds. It shows us how the command centers worked and how the missiles built up over time. In the command centers they had blast doors and they had humor too. Worldwide delivery in 30 minutes or less or your next one's free. Now if we go south into the Badlands, but before we get there we stop at Cactus Flats and see the white prairie dogs. Notice these are not albinos, their eyes are black instead of pink as they would have been. They're without melanin, but there are some brown ones here also. And now we come to the sign for Badlands National Park. This is a large park scattered over much area. We're going to be driving through the northern part on this route and then down through Pine Ridge Indian Reservation to see the southern area also before going to Wounded Knee. It's spectacularly beautiful. We go through the gate, show them our pass, 
And then right on the other side of the gate is our first stop, Big Badlands Overlook. We're up on a plateau, looking down over the plains below at the Badlands. It would be very hard to travel through this, you might imagine. It was called the Wall of the Badlands. This area is rich in fossils. Some of the ridges around here look so sharp, it looks like if you touch them, you'd cut yourself. Next we drive on down and come to the Castle Trail Parking. We're going to stop here and look a while also. This gets its name for many of the formations in this area that look like large castles that have fallen into ruin. Moving on along down the road, we come to the window. Next we'll stop at Cliff Shelf Nature Trail and look there a while. We're about to head down into the valley below. Down there is the visitor center we'll be at in a few minutes. Next stop is the Ben Raphael Visitor Center. It has a small museum in it. We're going to look around there. The museum basically deals with the fossils that have been found here. Now we head on through the Badlands. Can you imagine traveling through this and having to pick your way? There are routes through it as we show by driving through it, but you'd have to know where you're going or you'd run into many box canyons.
And then as we come around the bend, there's a whole bunch of cars parked. They're looking at bighorn sheep. There's a group of several males here, rams, and some of them seem to be getting ready to practice for the rut season. Next we're going to stop at Fossil Trail and we're going to park there and look at the trail. It's about a quarter of a mile long and we're going to look at where they found a lot of those fossils. This was their fossil beds and see some of them in the ground still. No Deborah, you can't pick up the real fossils. You can only touch the replicas. A little bit further down the road, we're back up on top of the plateau and at Homestead Overlook. Some unusual colors are coming out, and as we get the Canassa Basin Overlook, we see even more of them. The road then winds down to Yellow Mounds Overlook for an even closer look at these spectacular colors.
Next we come to Pinnacles Overlook. And then as we head on down the road, over there on the left, you can see the white on her rear end is a bighorn female sheep. And we're going to stop and look at her a minute. She's collared, obviously, with a radio collar. Now we're going to head down the gravel road called Sage Creek Rim Road and stop at several places along the way and look out. First stop, Hay Butte Overlook. Further on down the road, we come to Robert's Prairie Dog Town. And we're going to stop here and look at the prairie dogs, obviously. The birds out there are meadowlarks. As we drive along, there's about a dozen prairie dogs right there on the side of the road. And this is the only bison we saw here, although there are many others around somewhere. Now we head on down the road. We're going to be going down off the plateau and heading south now. We'll be leaving right now the Badlands National Park northern unit for a while and going through scenic South Dakota. Not much scenic there, just some old worn down, falling down buildings it seemed to me. South of scenic we enter the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. It's a very large reservation. In fact, the southern parts of the Badlands National Park are located within the Indian Reservation and are jointly operated by the National Park and the Native Americans. This is the Stronghold Unit. The way we're driving, it's a fairly narrow unit, and now we're leaving it, but still on the Indian Reservation. This is the site where the last armed conflict between the Native Americans and the American Army happened. Wounded Knee is one of the Lakota Sioux 
Indian reservations in South Dakota. As said before, the Native Americans scattered across the United States, but then they were pushed down into reservations like this one to try and control them and so the white men could have their gold. And now we come to the battle site. I make a mistake and pass a stop school bus to look at it. After their chief sitting bull was murdered, the Native Americans in the Northern Sioux reservations decided to move south to Pine Ridge in order to get away from what might be a bad situation. Not sure what they were doing, the military followed them and caught up with them and made them camp at a place called Wounded Knee Creek. This was General Custard's old unit, the 7th Cavalry. It was commanded by Colonel James Forsyth. They formed the Indians where the Red is and they encircled the camp with sentries and had their own camp. Then they put artillery up on the high hill. The chief, Bigfoot, was separated by himself in another separate area. And there were about 400 Native Americans, mostly women and children. There were over 600 army soldiers well armed. This area down there between the road and that first tree line, which is the Wounded Knee Creek is where the camp was set up and where the massacre took place. On December 29, 1890, they ordered the Indians to give up their weapons and they started doing that under a white flag. Little, one of the Indians, misunderstood and wrestled with the soldiers and a gun went off. Soldiers started firing indiscriminately, killing men, women, and children. And when the smoke cleared, over 300 Sioux were dead, mostly women and children. 36 soldiers were also killed, but they were killed by their own soldiers in the crossfire and not by the Native Americans. Nobody was actually killed by any Indian. The wounded soldiers and about 30 wounded Indians were brought to the church nearby to tend to them. Most of the wounded Indians also died, another 20 added to the list. Soon a snowstorm and 40 degree below zero weather started in and they left the bodies for three days. They finally went out and collected them, get paying them two dollars for each body. Then they were all buried in a mass grave up on a hill by the church. Down there is the proud place that the Americans slaughtered hundreds of unarmed women and children. And up is here is where they buried their bodies died what they had done. A commission was founded to investigate and basically as we all know they were found innocent of any wrongdoing. And there's a memorial there today to these Native Americans. An interesting side four days later when they picked up the bodies they found a live girl out there and Colonel Kobe adopted her as a most unusual and interesting Indian relic and showed her off until she died. There are also modern graves here from World War II and Vietnam War and dogs that never loved the pet and now it's time to head home. And then we head back north going through the Wounded Knee Indian Reservation. Soon we'll be in that southern unit of Badlands National Park and you can see the difference. Nobody lives here Probably they wouldn't want to. And then about sunset, we're driving into Rapid City, and that ends day 28.